Hey guys, back out in the garage tonight where we are going to try to finish up slipping this axle in our VW transmission. Before we start, let me just uh, give a little, di little project disclosure. Uh, I am setting this live axle, but I got to confess, I've never set up a Volkswagen live axle before. In fact, I've never set up a swing axle, which this is kind of kin to because it's got the swing axle spool and all that good stuff in it. But you know what? Uh, I've set up a couple of IRSs and sort of know uh, sort of the ins and outs of what I'm doing, at least I think I am. But you know what? Just because we haven't ever done something doesn't mean we can't jump in there and try it out and uh, get it done. Uh, with enough research and uh, just jumping in and doing it, I think, uh, I think it'll be okay. In theory, this technically, I think, should be easier than setting up an IRS or a swing axle because all it is is really it's uh, setting up preload and getting a certain backlash to make sure a pattern is okay on your gears and the uh, rest is, uh, that's it. Well, easily said anyways. But yeah, I'm not going to let that scare me. Um, but I'm going to show you how I did it anyways through the process and maybe I can learn something. If we fail, we fail, but whatever. So uh, where I left you off with this, uh, last time we had uh, installed our gear carry and the gears uh, inside the transmission and sort of went through and make sure it was shifting uh, into first through fourth and reverse quite well. And it, of course, did, if you want to see that previous video. Went in and uh, put our um, sort of bearing, I cut the bearing stopping plate because that's what it does. It keeps that... that um, main shaft bearing and, and pinion bearing from kind of beating its way into uh, this nose cone. Then we stuck our nose cone on. Uh, nothing super difficult about that. But uh, I want to say before that is uh, we established um, preload, bearing preload on this before we did all that. Uh, and what I mean by that is is the the uh, tightness of uh, the bearings with shims and all that inside the transmission. Uh, here's a, a good example of what I'm talking about. So I've got what I like to do is I like to mark the bearings that I or I'm sorry the shims that I start out with, and that way I've got a clear indication of which ones I have on each side and. Uh, what that measures up to so uh, and then I on this situation I like to use rotational I talk like I know what I'm doing but <laughs> I, don't, I like to use a rotational torque in uh, inch pounds uh, which is what the old Bentley manual sort of suggests and I have done that now these bearings in here are not brand spanking new they have been ran before but they're still in great shape so I'm leaving them alone. Brand spanking new bearings will send you out to, uh, you want to set those up for about 25 to 30 inch pounds. Uh, used bearings, uh, the Bentley manual suggests six to eight. Well, I, I'm going to go with, I think I had 10, 12. Anyway, it's hard to tell with what I'm using to do that, but uh, sometimes it looks like 10, sometimes it looks like 12. Nevertheless, it, it uh, rolls easy. Uh, it, it feels good and uh, it doesn't bind so I'm happy with it and I'm gonna keep it that way when we get uh, if we get new bearings in the future uh, we will change that up so the next thing to do was to measure backlash and of course backlash being how much play there is between the ring gear teeth and the pinion tooth so this is I figure this is about the easiest way I could think and stick me a uh, one of these uh, what do you call those it's like a magnetic magnetic uh, 90 degree angle that you'd use for welding and I just will take it off of that the problem is, is that we found is that I have about 12 thousandths backlash which is not what we want it needs to be tighter we need to bring it in so our goal tonight uh, is going to be to pop that um, side cover off and readjust our shims. So to get that in play right, uh, Bob, sorry, that backlash, uh, we have to move shims around. 
but we got to keep what we got if we want to keep our, um, you know, uh, keep what we got. So we got we got to take away from one side and put on the other if that makes any sense. So uh, because we our preload, we want to keep that preload the same. So I'm going to end up taking off uh, some from this side and adding some to the other to push it this direction to tighten up that, if that makes any sense. Uh, what I like to do, and I just showed it to you, um, you know, I'll write that down. So <laughs> the only problem I had was in writing all this down, it was, oh, that's great, it come out okay, but I didn't have enough shims. And none of the Volkswagen suppliers right now had anything that I needed uh, it was and I, I could have stacked it up with a bunch of like you know I guess uh, quarter millimeter shims 0.25 millimeter shims so I could have bought that but the problem is I hate I really hate spending $30 in product and it cost me $25 to ship it I didn't want to do that so I'm trying something else um, I'm using for Speedway Motors, uh, these are made for a three-inch uh, winter's axle or anything with a three-inch axle, and so uh, I'm gonna try those out, see if they work. I, they should fit. Uh, the diameter should be about right, and so uh, I'm going to. I've kind of made a guesstimate of what I think I should start out with, so we're gonna try this combination and move what we take away over. To this side which isn't too much so let's try that out all right well I got the uh, nuts off of the uh, side cover here and uh, so now I got to pop that dude off and uh, that way we can get to the ring gear uh, about the only efficient way I can think to do it, it, it with these big thick ones is luckily there's a bit of a lip on top and I can get a slide hammer and get one of these little fittings on it and just at least get it popped off. I hate to pry uh, with a screwdriver, but I still will do it sometimes. So, uh, let's get to doing that. One problem is, is you have to hold this transmission case with your leg. Uh, I may come up with a more efficient way of doing that at some point, but until I do, this is gonna have to work. Oh, see what I mean? Gravity will help us here. There we go. Pop it off with a screwdriver at this point. I don't have a problem with that. We'll pass the uh, band, the uh, rubber seal. Uh, I'll tell you what, I've learned that doing this is tedious work. No wonder it costs money what it does to build a transmission because it takes so much time to do so. Uh oh, I got one of our shims right there. Okay, here we go. Let's set this dude aside. And uh, pull it out. And set my shims down here because I want to re measure those. Alright, uh I'm not to put the camera down, but I'm going to try to tip that over, sort of pound that out. The axle is out and here she sits. Now you remember that sheet I showed you a second ago? This guy right here. Well it would turn out I made a boo-boo. I wrote down uh 0.34 millimeters on this side well that is correct for that side plus that uh, that extra little shim there the uh, the 0.25 millimeter shim well I measured that wrong that's actually a 3.2 millimeter so I'm gonna cross that out uh, right here and refigure that and probably on our shims I got over there I'm going to take it away. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put a smaller stack of shims there. 
And what we take away there, we're going to put over here, that way it pushes the teeth inward. See that right there? That's what we got a mess right there. So let's try, let me do a little bit of math here for a second, and I'll go back for round two. Well, I hope this isn't boring information, but like I said, uh, I called this round one, what we had just done. I fixed my little error right here, and I made this other sheet. Uh, you can download one of these little pictures from the internet, and uh, so this is the way I just like to do it. It helps keep me straight visually and numerically here. So round two. Uh, what I'm going to try to do, I've got to start somewhere. So I'm going to take a huge leap here. So I have gone in, and I have subtracted from the original uh, 320 I had, uh, the shim stack. This is going to be the new shim stack, which equals... Uh, 2.65 millimeters. I've subtracted that and got a difference of 0.55 millimeters. Now, so I've got to transfer 0.55 millimeters over to this side so that we keep uh, the exact same preload on our big bearings here. And so I have added that on. So we're going to stick this in with uh, this, which I got those shims to come up to like 0.59, which is close enough. So let's. Uh, Let's try those out and see how she fits. You know what? Scratch what I just showed you about that. I just stuck it in there. And I hadn't even put the side covers on, but it felt... I just didn't feel like I was going to get the backlash. I just didn't like the way it felt. Sometimes you can just feel the way it meshes. And I, I don't think I was going to get much backlash there at all. So I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm going to go with this, which is basically a total of... 0.35 millimeters over to this side so let's uh let's try that well there you go i've slipped these on there and i have confirmed that uh a three inch uh shim from i guess a winter's what do they call those quick change rear ends that will do it so uh you saw the that kit if you want to get with that instead of original vw stuff if you can't get to it so i've stuck um the other shims on this side, so I'm going to stick it back in here and uh, retest our backlash. Alright, well we got our bolts, I'm sorry, our nuts tightened here on the side cover. And, um, get a feel for it. Feels good. Feels good. Sounds better than what I just tried uh, with that extra shim in there. So I, and I'm not feeling... A ton of backlash. So we're gonna measure that and see what it'll do. Uh, tell you what I'm uh, hoping for. I would like about four thousandths. I would accept three. I might even accept up, up to six, but I think four would be the magic number for this thing. I don't want to wear out a ring gear, but at the same time, I don't know. I would accept the tight one. I guess I'd say that. So let's set up our um, dial indicator and see what we get. All right, gang, well, the verdict is in. Let's check and see what our backlash come out to. So I got all that set up, and we were looking to go to four thousandths, but I said I would accept around three or even less, but let's uh, check it out. I can just barely, barely turn it. So I've got two thousandths backlash. I'm going to leave it alone, actually, because a lot of racers would love to run that. And so I'm going to leave that backlash alone. Uh, I, you know, you got to have a little bit of room in there in between the, uh, the ring gear and the pinion head to get adequate oil um, so you don't wear stuff out. But one thing you don't want, you don't want a lot of slop in there because if you uh, take off... Uh, you know, you tend to break stuff. Of course, I will end up preloading most of the internals anyways by means of a handbrake. So I'm not too worried about that. But you know what? I don't know that with the shims I've got that I can um, do much better. I, I think the next step would be to, if I put another shim in there, it'd probably send me to the 6,000s, which is great for a stock build. Uh, six to eight is, is kind of where you want to that. But I'll, I'll accept uh, 2,000s uh, 
in play with that. So I'm going to call that kind of done. Um, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Um, if this video isn't too long, I may just tack on sticking my, um, my hubs and uh, I guess on the other side, the disc brake. So uh, if I don't get that on this video, I'll get it on the next. <clears throat> well, I hope I haven't bored you to death with this. Uh, I'm learning as I go. I've, like I said, I've never set up a live axle, but uh, we did today. Uh, we did. We were able to change the backlash without messing with the preload. Uh, and actually, I did test the preload. I'll show you what I kind of do with that. Although I don't have it all together at the moment. Where is my stuff? Oh, here it is. I'll show you just so that for educational purposes. You should really, a torque meter is the right tool to use, which that's not what this is, but it is an inch pounds uh, gauge. And what I can do is I put on a, a little piece here. Like I said, this is the first time I've done it, so I had to come up with something. Um, you know, I put a, something there I can turn, and so I will turn that. And as I do, uh, I can measure. And like I said, I was coming out uh, on a used bearing with about 10 inch pounds, which I'm happy with. I don't actually, I'll be honest with you, I tried experimenting with one other shim on the preload just to see what it would do. Way too tight. So we're going to live with that. I think it's fine. So I uh, hope you learned something. I sure as heck did. And uh, we will continue messing around with this and I uh, will get it on the. Um, on the rail at some point and we'll uh, go from there so until next video we'll see you hey hold up before you go so I did spend a few minutes here this afternoon uh, finally after I do did some yard work and stuff and finished up the transaxle so uh, what I went ahead and did was let me uh, let me show you so basically we throw the through the brake disc rotor on there i'm gonna have to fabricate um once i get it on the rail i need to fabricate some sort of way of, of holding our uh, caliper and disc and all that stuff and i'm probably gonna have to do two if i go asphalt that way i've got one for handbrake and one for um regular foot brake because I, I guess in the rules you got to have two so yeah and just for oh um, threw the hubs on i gotta actually bolt those downs i've got the hardware in there and uh, lastly just for fun i'm gonna take this off i think but i threw my hydraulic slave cylinder on there i've, I've got a usually i like to fabricate me my own little wing nut because it won't be volkswagen specific that way i can adjust it and there'll be some other hardware changes but yeah there she goes she is done and ready to set on the rail so uh, we'll do that sometime here in the near future. Stick some gear oil in it and uh, she's really ready to rip. So anyways, until next video, we'll see you.